No worries. Wow. No worries. Um, yeah, uh, I put the books up just just so that we <laughs> yeah. just okay. so that we yeah don't have to worry anymore. Um, All right, yeah. so we're okay. back at it, and we're now in the Sumer Sumerian dictionary. And I'm just going to read a little bit of that introduction. I'm going to start working my way through here because it uh, it really um, you know is spilling the beans on a lot of uh, lot of our past. We got to, we got to hear things we've never heard before, and the uh, stone unturned. Don't, don't let me. Um, I got to more of the Babylonian Talmud as well. I've got two more books I'm looking at. A little bit of symbolism, and then a little bit of a. a um, dictionary on all the scriptures and myths, and then I'll do the Talmud. I'll close out with the Talmud, okay? So we'll see if we can do that. I'm going to pace myself. And um, so the introductory part here is, uh, uh, there was, there was uh, and is, an Aryan race that is to say the characteristic modes of speech termed Aryan were developed among the blonde, long heads alone. Well, if it says long heads, I don't know if that means long hair. I don't know. Uh, that one uh, throws me off a little bit. But, uh, but, however much, however much some of these may have been modified by the importation of non-Aryan elements. That's Huxley in his footnote here, the Aryan question, 19th century, November 1890, page 766. He's obviously long-winded. Nothing has been known as to the racial and linguistic affinities of the Sumerians, the oldest of civilized peoples. Well, that's after the flood. You see, this is a, it's always being made like they're the oldest civilization. They, they came on the map after the flood. So let's talk about a few thousand more years. Okay, prior to the flood, there was maybe 3,000 years, at least two, if not three, and maybe even four. So, uh, because they, the, the time is an illusion, and they, they've been masters at, at creating the illusions in our time window. So we have to be open to that. Okay, so uh, so let's try this again. Uh, nothing has been known as to the racial and linguistic affinities of the Sumerians, the oldest of civilized peoples, whose monuments and vast city ruins in Mesopotamia, correctly, uh, that's uh, the Greek for uh, Padam Aram, Padam, Zavram, Padam, Zavram, Fedam, Fedam. All this is how they they play with the words Padam, Aram, Zavram, uh, meaning uh, in one sense the land of the so the powerful sovereigns. That's one of the aspects. The original word began to be discovered some 50 years ago, so that's mid 1800. But who seen themselves after suddenly appeared there with a fully fledged higher civilization suddenly appeared there suddenly appeared there with a fully fledged higher civilization. Get the picture. Just like they say with Mazar, pseudo-Egypt, okay? That these people just somehow appear on the scene with this technology. Where did it come from? That's what people like Graham Hancock were always asking the question. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and they, they, don't, they leave the scriptures out, and that's the problem. Yeah. Because the, the yeah. answers are found within the uh, most ancient scriptures. You trying to jump in? Just agreeing with you. That's it, I'm okay. seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Because like okay. I remember when. Uh, sorry, I'll jump in now. Um, <laughs> um, I remember when I used to think that um, aliens were real, and was looking into all of the ancient architects and all that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm seeing it now. So I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're the masters yeah. of illusion, and they they are the sky gods, the sun gods. See, even the the term Anunnaki um, would apply to them, yeah. but they got yeah. us, uh, removed. You know, they they said, "No, you know, you know." Like the, the criminal, he points the finger at somebody else. He don't want you looking at him. He wants you looking at someone else. So they had to create these illusions of devils, demons, aliens. Of course, just change one letter. The, the code in the R and the L, they're both secret vowels, and and you you switch them out. You know, left hand, right hand, uh, light the right hand and the left hand, the hand rest of life. And you just change, switch out. So the Aryan, alien, just change one letter. Alien is Aryan, you know. So, uh, so continuing here, Mesopotamia began to be discovered in some 50 years ago. As I said, it was prior to the flood. But who seen themselves after suddenly appearing there with a fully fledged higher civilization to have 
has suddenly disappeared after a, a comparatively brief existence as a nation, talking about Sumer, and leaving no descendants to continue their culture and language. Well, it's because they changed their names and their faces. That's all they do. They're, 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 uh, you know, the unseen hand was uh, obviously attempting to bring forth the, um, the civilizations after their model, and therefore uh, Babylon you know, is right right around the corner here. Uh, Matar, prior to the flood, was already there, and they built pyramid civilizations all around the world. They were, it was a one world order at that time. So study by leading Syriologists and Sumer, Sumerologists of their, of their diction, language, language not the right word, but we can use it, and writing has tended rather to deepen than dispel the mystery surrounding them, for it has led to the conclusion crystallized by continual repetition into a dogma that the language has no affinity with any recognized linguistic group, and that in particular it had no affinity whatever with the Aryan languages, the English and the uh, continental languages of Europe and India. Thus the Sumerians, with their marvelously high civilization, art, culture, and language, have hitherto been regarded as a sort of fossil curiosity. Where'd they come from? Where did they go? A remote and totally extinct alien race in no way related to any modern people, nor to their civilization or language. But then, thanks to Stitch, and now they are the Anunnaki, you know, that um, came from Nibiru, um, a, a dead uh, solar system star that um, comes through every so many thousands of years, you know. And um, give me a break, okay? Uh, how difficult is life to occur on a planet just like Earth, and they've got a dead star, and they're just cruising through the galaxy coming in every 3,500 years or whatever? Or, you know, it's, it's all so, so stupid when you really look at it logically, you know? And, um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and they want a goal. They, they, of course, they, they, they created us in test tubes. We're across uh, yeah. creation made in test tubes, which, therefore, anybody who follows that denies uh, divine origin of our of our species, uh, of all life on Earth, actually. And, um, yeah, the aliens from the universe, okay. And um, and that they needed the gold, they came down and stole the gold. No, I think uh, I think the, the greedy people on Earth stole the gold. They needed the gold for all their technology, you know. Um, the reverse, is in gold they trust, actually. It says on the dollar, in gold they trust. God at the hell. And um, the reverse is uh, not found to be the fact, actually. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me, the reverse is now found to be the fact. That's what he's stating here. In former works, I have described the manner in which, in searching for clues to the lost origins of the early Aryans, our long-lost racial ancestors of the white race, I think we're all different shades of brown, but that's okay, to whom we owe our civilization and language. I was led by the facts to observe that the Sumerians were early Aryans that the portrait representation of the Sumerians on their own monuments and official and sacred seals are preponder, uh, preponderantly of the Aryan physical type. And the footnote, the portrait statue of the chieftain of, Mon uh, of Mongolite race, racial type, which has lately been uh, unearthed in by say, Sir J. Marshall in the excavations of the ancient city-state in the Indus Valley, which has yielded so many cultural objects and inscribed seals, which I have termed Indo-Sumerian, in no way militates against the Aryan racial character of the Sumerians. For I have adduced the Indian epic and Vedic evidence to show that the Sumerian colony traded with Tibet and conquered the Mongoloid Sakas and Skits of the Upper Indus Valley and incorporated them in the Great Sumerian Empire. And uh, and we should just mention that there's been this uh, ongoing debate, you know, a ping pong with, uh, you know, well, no, the Aryans came out of the West. No, the Aryans came out of the East. The Aryans came out of the West. And, and so this will be the argument all along because they don't want to just give us the answer because they can't give us the answer because, one, it refers back to our scriptures and to Adam, 
uh, the first of the Aryan race and the knowledge he w that was breathed into him. So it's it's a cover up. It's a cover up uh, because they uh, because they know who they are and they and they're the ones running our world, of course. And they're the fallen the fallen Bekoresh, the Watchers. Uh, today we they also still call them the uh, Vickers in the uh, in the Vatican. But they they were in Babylon. They were in um, you know India, of course, and in Tibet. Tibet was one of their strongholds where they put everything in the mountains and the caves, you know, and um, it's the greatest show and cover up on earth, of course. That these, uh, continuing, that the Sumerian language with its writing was the early Ur Aryan speech and script. Well, the script was, of course, a, a manufacturer, just like the uh, El Strangulo or the uh, demonic script of uh, Arabic or uh, what became the uh, Aramaic in the East and also uh, the Hebrew, you know, all the, and the Greek, the Greek, the funny little squiggly letters when they use all capital letters. Look at the monuments. All the monuments have what we find on, you know, what's called Phoenician alphabet, capital letters, okay, and straight lines. That's the true Sanskrit. So so uh, they were, what they were doing is because they didn't want us to have access to the most significant capital letter system of straight lines, that we find in our uh, dual system, because they gave us a dual system, rather interesting, when any civilization only had one system as a means of communicating. Um, we have a dual system today, but they, uh, you know, they, they switched out. All these switch outs occurred, and they even changed the name from our our true Sanskrit, which is the capital letters, and gave it a name of the demotic in uh, India called Sanskrit, Sanskrit which is a pseudo-Sanskrit because it, you can't write in the sand with that demotic script. Only with straight lines can you write in the sand. And this is, and I'm, I'm, I'm the only one probably defining this here, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I'm the only one, but I've never heard this defined anywhere. And it's, it's all provable. It's all provable. It's been a lifetime of study. And just as one example, the, the way the switch-outs occurred uh, after the flood, when most writing systems... Uh, at least the writing systems of the uh, ancient Mediterranean world were all writing from right to left. It said after the flood, all of a sudden, all of the writing began to go from left to right. Not all, you know, not all, but uh, not those who were on the right using the Aramaic. No, they were still writing from the right to the left, but they got all the others to go from left to right. Well, if your sovereignty is on the right and they get everybody to get on the left, what do you think? They lose their sovereignty, right? Wow! And, um, and wow! How the game has to play. Yeah. Wow! It yeah. just—it's just so—it's really hard to wrap my head around. Um, just just because of all the all the programming uh, that we've we've been through, um, it's really hard to wrap my head around uh, writing from right to left. How that can feel normal. Um, yeah, it's it's just wow. They've they've and they've try wrapping yeah. a turban around your head and soak with water and you'll feel better. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've 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 covered everything. They have dotted all all their T's, uh, all their I's, and cross all their T's. Yeah, oh, it's getting late. I'm a bit um. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they're yeah. teaching us not to dot the I's and not to cross the T's and and to put and put a T in the place of the S and. And, yeah, and I yeah. in place of the, of the A, you know, it's, it's a science. What they've done to us is a science, and the good news is um, they did it in a way that it can actually be uh, back-engineered. Of yeah. course, Yeshua is the one who's opened up the, the, the code to me. Um, it was, it, it was um, I, I faced so much opposition in, um, through friends and people who just don't care, you know, um, calling themselves Christian, whatever that means to them. And... Um, you know, and but they hate the light, right? They hate the, they hate the discovery, and we're told to correctly, rightly divide the words of truth or the ancient words of truth to rightly divide them, and that means you also then, if you divide them, you have to add them up. You have to properly, um, you know, uh, know the parent roots and um, and the game that's been played. So, um, so I don't. I, to me, it's exciting. I, I'm so grateful that the Heavenly Father has uh, revealed uh, these. Um, uh, you know, codes to me, the natural code, as well as the occultic uh, code, the Luciferian code. You know, just like the word, um, you know, I mentioned on the program yesterday, um, that um, the word sefer, you know, sefer from the Hebrew, uh, 
I should have I should have added during the program that that's just a, you know the abbreviation of Lucifer. Lucifer. Oh wow. Sefer, they call it Lucifer, which means code. Yeah. But the Lucifer means the true, the true code or the true profane. So they're goddess. There's nothing other than the code itself. That's their woman. It's just like um, you know, they're, 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 if anybody has seen the uh, the thing about Coral Castle in um, you know in um, Florida, Southern Florida, this guy came, comes over from Europe and he builds a coral castle, a megalithic structure of it in its own right, all by himself, a, a guy five feet tall. And nobody knows how he lifts the blocks and, and does all the, the cutting and all this other stuff. And, um, and and every time somebody asked him, you know, what's he, what's he doing? And he, he tells everybody, I'm doing this for my sweet 16. He keeps saying, he does it for his sweet 16, you know, but she never came. And, and um, so the point, the point is that they... Um, you know, they give credit to, uh, uh, you know, something other. And uh, so Lucifer is their goddess, but she's merely an idea, she, you know, like a corporation. It takes a life of its own. And so so this uh, dominating the world, uh, you know, the grand illusion, the, the grand illusion is being played on us. The tricks are being played against us. They have always been played against us. And they began thousands of years ago prior to the flood, you know, Nobody even gets the Mediterranean Sea as being the flood. And then I confirm it with the Latin I just saw on a documentary yesterday. Mediterranean Sea in the Latin is mare uh, intern, internum. Mare internum. And that means the inland sea. Well, why would they call wow. it an inland sea unless it didn't come inland? Yeah. Onland, right? Yeah. Inland onland also means the inner sea. The inner sea, you see? So... That there's no reason they would call it something like that if it were there all along from the beginning, only because they want to remember that it is the sea in the middle of the land that encroached upon the land, that the African and Europe split apart, you know? Um, Desert, um, I have a possible wow for you um, that I just... <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but uh, wow. Um, they, they, I've heard um, it mentioned here in Australia that we used to have an inland sea um, and that inland sea is was um, or is now called Lake Eyre Lake Eyre E-Y-R-E Lake Eyre um, it's not there all the time uh, it dries up often um, it comes and goes uh -huh. but that's from memory, I don't know, I, I looked into this uh, years ago, um, from memory that's where the inland sea was and I think they still call it that or refer refer to it as that but um, okay. the word um, air just made me think of uh, it just made me think of Aryan air, Aryan yeah. yeah, yeah, well Aryan is of the air sure, yeah, yeah so, okay. very good no worries. Thank you. All right. I'm worried. Are you worried? No, nope. uh, Not at all. All right. So, <laughs> hey, we're already winning then. Okay. So, continuing, that Sumerian language, I'll back up a little bit to my highlight. Okay. That Sumerian language that, uh, with its writing, uh, was the early in Aryan speech, supposedly, and script, uh, um, well, no, it was the Aryan speech, but I, I meant I was referring to the script, because that, uh, that script that looks like, uh, they call it cuneiform, and it looks like uh, bird feet. That uh, that was strictly engineered to uh, divert from the, the pure Aryan script that we find today in uh, what's called Phoenician alphabet or the capital letters. That is the original. That is very powerful in its nature, and that that is what I'm working with in the uh, Indo-Germanic. Um, so, and the parent of the Aryan family of languages, ancient and modern, with their writings, and in particular the parent of the English, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Gothic, Norse. Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, and all unsuspectedly also of the ancient Mithraim or Egyptian languages and writing. That this Aryan speech with its writing was spread over the ancient world by the Phoenicians. Yeah, but that's later on. See, they weren't Phoenicians. First they were the Celtic, the kill, with the killing technology. They were the ones who were first used, the children of Cain. Uh, who had the stain of blood, the redhead and uh, fiery red hair and spots all over the body. Um, and um, 
but this is uh, this is powerful stuff because it confirms uh, you know the truth. And just like uh, it, it was touted that in, in the beginning, Harry, uh, 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 what we're calling Harry, Indo-Germanic, uh, was spoken four thousand miles in every direction. You know, from one end of China to you know one end of Africa, all the way up into northern Europe, all the way to the southern, you know, India. You know, so it was four thousand miles in every direction. Because it was it was the dominance that they were projecting as being a superior race and dominating the world. Okay, uh, the Phoenicians. So uh, uh, backing up over the ancient world by the Phoenicians, who are not Semites. Well, Semite is another diversion. We're dealing with Aramaic Aramean culture, which is correctly Aryan, as hitherto supposed. But the leading seafaring branch of the Sumerians or early Aryans. Of course, that's why they were right here near the waters. Indeed, arbitrariness of the Assyriologist dogma of the non-Aryan nature, see, he's calling it dogma, uh, of the non-Aryan nature of the Sumerian tongue was self-evident. Um, and that, in that it was admittedly not based upon any serious comparison of the languages themselves. Thus, the leading Sumeriolo Sumerologist, Sumeriologist, Sumerologist in this uh, land summer, uh, summarily dismissed the mere possibility of any such affinity with the words. I am convinced that it, the Sumerian tongue, he's quoting now, I am convinced that it, the Sumerian language, has no affinity with either the Caucasian, Aryan, or Semitic groups. This side of the problem has not occupied my attention, as the futility of such efforts is at once apparent, unquote. And, um, and so, you see, he, he uh, says, oh, it's not even worth my consideration here. I don't even need to look at it. I already know. And I'm not going to look. Ha, ha. Because if I did, I have to admit the truth, obviously. But I've been paid off. Don't you get it? I'm in university. I am tenured. Tenured means I've got ten years and I can't hear nothing unless I'm told what I've got to hear. Or I don't get my paycheck. Okay, so um, on the other hand, as the result of my actual detailed analysis and Comparison of the Sumerian with the Aryan family of languages, I recorded that the Sumerian proved to be radically, 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 radically Aryan in its words, in its Asia words, structure and shultre, script, and that the whole family of Aryan diction with the written letters is derived from the Phoenician language, well, it can't be because it predates Phoenician. You see, this is where um, he's good. He's good, but you know, there's, there's there's still a lot of mystery behind all the history, right? And so, so it's okay because we can now build build off of this and get the picture because it, it predates the Phoenician. Um, the whole family of the Aryan races with their written letters is derived from the Phoenician. No, it's, it's just the, the more primitive, uh, you know, merchants, even prior to the flood, and script with its parents, the Sumerian, and that about 50%, 50% of the commonest words in use in the English diction today, today, is discovered to be Sumerian in origin, well, it, but it also goes back to Sanskrit, what's called, pseudo, I call pseudo-Sanskrit. Uh, and, and so what we're really talking about, of course, is the ancient Indo-Germanic in the mother tongue. That's the way to, to qualify it. And today it's discovered to be Sumerian in origin with the same word form, sound, and meaning. Let me read the footnote. Uh, no, there's no big footnote here. And I gave many specific instances of the Sumerian origin and of critical English and other Aryan and Mesopotamian. Egyptian words occurring incidentally in the text of the Sumerian and Phoenician monuments and seals on the prehistoric monuments of the ancient Britain cited and translated therein. Further, I adduced evidence for the Sumerian Phoenician origin of Egyptian civilization and its diction and hieroglyphic writing and found that Minis or Aha, the warrior, first the first of the pharaohs, the and Sargon the Great were Aryan Sumero-Phoenicians. Well, Celtic would have been more appropriate. The, that's a killing technology. That's what they instituted from the beginning. The former being put
clearly identified with the Mesopotamian, that's Padam Aram, Emperor Menes Tusu, or Menes the Warrior, the son of Sargon, and thus gained the first, for the first time, a synchronism, and thus gained for the first time a synchronism for Menes to fix his date, the most disputed of all critical dates in ancient history. Yeah, they really, they really messed it up. We find that with the flood as well, where they're trying to say there's no evidence of the uh, exodus, of the exodus, you know, because uh, they, they've uh, redated uh, the exodus as being during the time of Ramses, when it was a couple hundred years prior to Ramses, before Ramses, in the Middle Kingdom period, and not in the later. So that's why they say, well, we got no evidence of the exodus. Jericho was already destroyed. You know, what a, what a clever ar uh, argument they created. Yeah, By they change people. the dates oh. and create, recreate history, and then, then, yeah. then prove, then show the proof that they created, which is a lie, if that makes sense. They have to discredit yeah. the scriptures. They're out. They, these people calling themselves Israel are out the gate. We're trying to destroy all evidence of Yahweh. You know. Yeah. All of it. You know. Yeah. They, they, I mean, the uh, Rod Wyatt. He's he discovered all these great discoveries from Noah's Ark to the cross original crossing yeah. to Mount Sinai to, yeah. you know, the Ark of the Covenant under where Yeshua was crucified, and, the, and Israel stands mute, stands mute on all of this, in fact, work overtime with their Jewish uh, archaeologists to, to, to discredit everything now about the scriptures. They hate Yahweh. Their whole idea of, you know, the Bible is uh, what's in the Word, you know, the Bible is a bib. It's a covering. The Bible is a covering for their Babylonian Talmudic uh, nature. And um, who they serve, Bob Wan, Bandi, Rashish, Hashish, and um, you know, out of India, the, the ancient Aryan Brahmin uh, priesthood dominating the world. The one hand, you know, one hand, um, left hand, right hand dominating the world. That's all. Let me get a sip here. Um, just while you're sipping, have you got the chat in front of you? Because uh, Lynn has a question. Yeah. Yeah, I have a. Uh... Okay, did you just say minis and or a uh, ha uh, are the same? Okay, let me read that again. <laughs> yeah. Further, he, he saw, this is a um, L. Austin Waddell, who has done this dictionary. And he says, Further, I adduced evidence for the Sumero Phoenician origin of Egyptian civilization and its language in hieroglyphic writing, and found that Menes, M E N E S, or Aha, A H A, quote, the warrior, or meaning Menes, the warrior, the first of the pharaohs, and Sargon the Great were Aryan Sumero Phoenician. The former being clearly identified with the Mesopotamian Padamaram Emperor Menes Tusu, or Menes, M A N I S, the warrior, the son of Sargon and thus gaining for the first time a synchronism for Menes, M-E-N-E-S, to fix his date, the most disputed, the most disputed, the most disputed of all critical dates in ancient history. Okay? The present day, uh, I hope that helped you, uh, uh, the present day, uh, excuse me, the present dictionary, on uh, the compilation of which I have been engaged more or less continuously, for the past 16 years, now gives the detailed results of my comparative analysis and exploration of the Sumerian and Aryan tongue, and more especially in regard to the English diction, which is disclosed as one of the chief branches of the Sumerian and Aryan Phoenicians. Of course, they hide it all right in front of us. What a better place to put it. In it hindsight. Be, because they're laughing at us. Yeah. Laughing. It will be because we're so stupid. It will be seen that where no Aryan affinity whatever has hitherto been found or even suspected by Assyriologists or Sumeriologists as existing in Sumerian, practically all the Sumerian words are radically Aryan. And that over 75%, over 75% of the current English words numbering many thousands even from the radical word signs and more common compound signs to which this dictionary 
is limited, are derived from the Sumerian, but we could add Pseudo-Sanskrit, and of course it's all nothing other than, uh, than the uh, Indo-Germanic mother tongue. These other names are irrelevant because they are all comparable. They are all reflections on one another. That's, that was the great civil, pyramid civilization dominating the world, out the gate, full-blown with knowledge. Yeah. And, um, well, had a big woo loop there from. Yeah. Her. Okay. She <laughs> light bulbs going off for her. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and they are derived from Sumerian. And that the ancient Egyptian tongue, at present unsuspected of having any any affinity any affinity at all with the Aryan, is also with its system of hieroglyphic writing radically Aryan. And my contention has been that uh, while we get these beautiful hieroglyphic pictures, which means higher attic. They always had the Aryan script behind them. How did they ever communicate? Not by drawing those stupid pictures on the wall. You, you know, you got to be an artist in order to do that. They use straight line. What we find on our capital letters, that was the original alphabet, breathed into the Aryan, breathed into Adam, okay, from the beginning, but it was kept private and secret. Yeah, and as yeah. we learned by reading uh, some of the other uh, stuff I've been reading over the last uh, interviews, um, wow. that... They started by just using one letter, you know, and then two letters, you know, they slip yeah. it out. It splits out very microcosmically, and then ultimately we then see it full-blown, um, you know, by the time we're getting our, uh, you know, um, the time, you know, fifth, uh, say 1500 B.C., or the time of the Exodus, you know, about this time we're now seeing it. Of course, the Aryans had it, uh, Jacob, uh, Zabramheim, you know, uh, Nova, all of the Enoch, all had the script, they weren't so much keeping it secret, but the one world uh, unseen hand that wanted to dominate and control our thinking and mankind kept it secret. They destroyed all the evidence. That's why they don't talk about Noah's Ark. That's why they don't talk about the Ark of the Covenant. That's why they don't talk about the original Red Sea crossing. Um, I just confirmed yesterday that the Sea of Aqaba, and I can prove it now in two different places, that it, it claimed that that was called the Red Sea. What's called the Sea of Aqaba which is where Solomon began his creating his fleet of ships, also at the shores of not Edom, but Adam, and it calls it Adam in the Yahwistic text I just finished reading. Uh, you know, it's provable that that was the Red Sea. The Red Sea we see today on the map was not called the Red Sea, the Sea of Aqaba. Off to the side, the smaller uh, inlet of water was the Red Sea. And so I now can prove it by, you know, uh, two different sources. And... Um, and, I, and I've already known it, you know, intuitively. The Father is, you know, revealing this stuff to me. Of course, you've got to live in this, uh, and live in the past. You know, you've got to live in these books, and you've got to, you know, be. Uh, it's it's quite a, you know, it's quite an effort, as you know, uh, as you've been learning with my, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, my uh, commitment to reading uh, 12 hours a day, and uh, on average, you know. Uh, so continuing here, the Sumerian diction thus seem to have been uh, evolved by our Aryan ancestors as with the great spiritual and cultural current which it embodies flowed steadily down into our modern life and so explains the remarkable fundamental unity of thought in the higher ancient civilizations which has endured down through the ages. And of course today they made it a commercial code and war diction and turned it from free-flowing and peaceful uh, peace-loving, uh, free system. Nobody could manipulate or control stealing it and giving out the demonic as an alternative and or, or they'll kill you. And that's what they tell to the priesthood. You, you give us all your copies of the Diatessaron, which was the harmonization of the Gospels, and, um, and we're going to give you the demonic, uh, strangulo, pathetic-looking script called Syriac and Aramaic today, uh, and nobody knows that it was a switch-out. Nobody gets it. The light bulb doesn't go up because nobody's talking about it. I only have one source for that, in particular, and uh, and it's the, uh, the the book of the Peshito, which is um, the uh, Murdoch version of the Aramaic from the late 1800s. Uh, just go look uh, look that up, ladies and gentlemen. Murdoch. Okay, it's uh, I'll have to find uh, pack the pack the books away, so I can't uh, refer, refer you to the publisher right now. Um, the Sumerian. Okay, so uh, the vast and remote. Currency. I'm almost done here. The vastly remote currency of Aryan 
words might indeed have been suspected from what we know of how poetic associations become attached and cling to words through long usage, then we may surmise that the rapid, enormous progress in literature with the revival of letters and the word magic, that's interesting, the word magic, uh, word magic, hyphenated word, um, which characterizes the best poetry of both ancient and modern, ancients and moderns, that of Homer and Virgil, of Dante, Shakespeare, Bacon, and Milton, and has been due in a hitherto unsuspected degree to the long life and world prevalence of the Aryan tongue, which resulted from the enterprise of the Sumerian Phoenicians. And it goes back, go back from Azar, go back to what we call Egypt as well, and the Celtic. So, so this is this is good because it's sort of like the missing piece of the puzzle, and it helps everything else fit, ladies and gentlemen. So don't forget you hear to hear heard to hear first, and um, hope you uh, tell your friends about the broadcast and and uh, and point them this way, okay? Because we're just we're unloading, you know. We're just here unloading, and hope that um, you know people get the picture. Um, we're we giving it we're giving it away, you know. Uh, love a donation certainly because we have a, a, a big work to do to publish I don't know how, you know I've been trying to get to the publishing point for, for really a couple decades now uh, and um, and we don't have a, a you know the support base to do that and uh, so by just telling people about our broadcast somebody will come in and could could be the, you know the big funder for the uh, project I've got uh, you know books already good to go you know and we don't have the uh, ability to publish and this should be published what uh, we're doing orally here is um, is on the cutting edge. Okay, we're 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 head and shoulders way out in the, in the front. Okay, in the front, there's not even a line. It's in front of any line, and um, and the smaller lines are only like three or five or ten people, you know, that are you know projecting these um, uh, fundamental um, aspects of this. So um, okay, so hope you will um, join the um, join the uh, caravan here and, uh, and help <laughs> us out. I'm. I'm uh, I'm trying to okay. I need another break, uh, Ninja. Yeah, so, that's fine. Uh, then we'll, um, we'll close out. We'll just do a little uh, dictionary of scriptures and myths, and then uh, we'll try to cap off with the the, the the very messy and slimy Talmud, and um, and then we'll be um, and I'm going to leave symbolism for tonight on the uh, for, uh, Forbidden History Live, Forbidden History Live at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Uh, thanks to uh, Shelley, uh, Yo Shelley. Okay, we'll uh, be up to pick it up there with that tonight. It's a big, I got some big symbolism. One of them was on the sun, and uh, so that'll be uh, good to read, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, please subscribe. Um, any new listeners, please subscribe to Forbidden History Live um, and check the bell so that you don't miss out. Um, it's amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, uh, the link is in the description. Um, also, when we come back from the break, uh, uh, are you still there, Desert? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm reading a bit, uh, um, uh, comment here after her woohoo. Uh, I have been researching, yeah, because I yeah. have been researching Minas for 10 years, the hunter. I, I think uh, this is the same Ham's son who stole Adam's clothes, a mighty hunter uh, before the Lord. Right, well, also a.k.a. Nimrod, if that is the same, it could be the same same one, there's a big story there. The Book of Jasher has some of the missing elements there. Lynn, if you haven't read Jasher, you've got to get it. So, okay, thank you for that follow-up, and back to you, Lynn. Okay, uh, we'll go to a quick break, and then we will be right back. You're listening to the <laughs> Forbidden History Chronicles with Ninja Cat 111 and Desert Owl, and uh, you're hearing things that have, have never uh, been uh, said before. Um, you're hearing it here first. Go ahead, I'm sorry, interrupt. Sorry? I was just saying you're hearing it, hearing it here first. <laughs> That's right. Always, and, uh, always. about three minutes. Uh, yeah. Ninja, okay. <laughs> 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 All good. Um, yeah, okay. We'll be back after the break.
Okay, welcome back to the Forbidden History Chronicles. You're here with Ninja Cat 111 and Desert Owl from the Forbidden History series YouTube channel. Um, if you're not familiar with his channel, please subscribe. The link is in the description of all these live streams. Um, also, uh, go back to June 21st last year, 2018. Uh, if you're new, uh, to hearing it here first um, and uh, start there um, they're, they're amazing live streams um, desert walks you through everything um, helps it helps uh, with understanding uh, what is really going on in this world um, there's beautiful readings by desert and yeah love um, it's just amazing to listen to. Um, Desert is also currently broadcasting on Forbidden History Live uh, so please go and subscribe to his new channel uh, with our producer Yo Shelley, <laughs> Yo Engineer, our Yo Engineer. Um, yeah the links all the links are in the description so please subscribe and check the bells everywhere you go. Um, welcome back Desert. No worries. I'm uh, getting busy looking at all those red daisies going back and forth. I like um, it. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I can t I can switch if you like. Um. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's cute. You can leave it. Whatever you want to do. Um, I never saw those kind of flowers before. I think they're nasty. supposed to... They're, I, I don't know. I thought sunflowers, but they're too... Um, movable to be sunflower <laughs> maybe I think they're, they're, they're putting daisies, somebody in the office daisies. I'm not sure but you better yeah. research it anyway okay, back to <laughs> the story and I and I it's been I've been saving this I've been tagged this page probably 10 days ago now uh, but uh, so I don't remember the it's an interesting definition but then there's two others that follow it we're in the dictionary of all scriptures and myths and so this is called uh, Ten Gara, uh, Gara, Ten Gara, the father of all fish and the great, the great god of the ocean. So uh, it, there was something in here, uh, it, it, funny title, but let's just see where it goes. A symbol of the logo, the logos, got the S on it, the logos, or the higher self, from whom proceeds all truth. Now, I don't know where, uh, oh, this is Polynesian mythology, this is where this comes from. And we're just showing the harmonies, you know, that are around, um, you know, the different, uh, uh, you know, cultures around the world. Ten, Tengara, enraged that some of his children deserted him, deserting him, and being sheltered by the, the god of the forest on dry land, has ever since waged war on his brother, Tane, Mauta who in return has waged war against him, as Polynesian mythology. Okay, divine love, continuing in this idea, in another definition by uh, Gaskell here, divine love regarded from below appears as anger. Sometimes it does, doesn't it? Because opposed to the lower self will and accompanied by suffering, evolution proceeds through the struggle in the soul between love and desire, desire being tame. God and the, and the adversary, spirit and matter. The strife is necessary in the separate souls in order that they should possess individually the potencies of spirit come and come forth as conquerors through the power of the Christ within them, okay? And so there's two other definitions that are, uh, one is Tau Great, and, um, and Tau Great, the Tau is the, at the end of the alphabet, that's the last letter, the T-A-O. Uh, sometimes we hear it in other uh, forms, like Tav, T-A-V, another aspect of that, Tau, the Great. A symbol of the absolute, the infinite, 
the unknowable reality behind all manifestation. Thou, the master, Thou Zhu, uh, said, the great Tao has no bodily form, but it pr produced and nourishes heaven and earth, sun and earth, sun, earth, and moon. The great Tao has no passions, but it causes the sun and moon to revolve as they do. The great Tao, it's actually the earth that's revolving too. The great Tao has no name, but it affects the growth and maintenance of all things. That's the classic of purity. The higher self declares within the soul that the absolute is unmanifest, but it emanates and sustains the universe of spirit and matter. The absolute is unconditioned, but from it proceed the activities of the higher and lower selves in the cycle of life. The absolute cannot be described or defined, but it is the source of the life, development, and sustenance of all that exists. Wow. There was something undefined and complete coming into existence before sun, earth, and moon. How still it was and fearless standing alone and un undergoing no change, reaching everywhere and in no danger of being exhausted. It may be regarded as the mother of all things. It is the Tao, the Great, from Tao Te King, and we could also possibly say it is the Atom, that which is the smallest is actually the most powerful of creation. And then Tao in the two aspects, the pure and the torpid. Oh, there's a, there's a definition on tears. I think we're going to have to read that since we did tear, tears earlier. We'll see what that is. Okay, so Tao in the two aspects, the pure and the torpid. Symbols of spirit and matter differentiated from one, the one. Now the Tao shows itself in two forms, the pure and the torpid, and has the two conditions of mo uh, motion and rest. The sun is pure and the earth is turbid. The sun moves and the earth is at rest. Or is it the earth moving and the sun at rest? I think it's the earth moving and the sun is at rest. The masculine is pure and the feminine is torpid. The masculine moves and the feminine is still. The radically, the radical purity descended and the torpid issued flowed abroad. Thus and thus all things were produced. That comes from the classic purity, the classic of purity. The absolute emanates two aspects, the primal duality, spirit and matter having the conditions of energy and inertia, respectively. Spirit is vibratory and matter is atomic. There you go. Wow. From the atom. Spirit is dynamic and matter is static. Wow. Spirit is... Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Spirit is the life side of being. And matter is the dead side of form. Spirit is the mover and matter is the move the ray of the spirit descended into matter and the forms with their qualities came into being and thus the universe was produced this is how the universe was produced and the last uh, short definition here uh, is um, a lot of interesting stuff in here tears or children of the evil one a symbol of the desires and the passions proceeding from the lower principle and which bind the soul to incarnation in the lower nature. Okay, and that's from the Dictionary of All Scriptures and Myths. I highly recommend people get it. It's by Gaskell. Okay, and we're going to now close out with uh, that infamous, notorious, disgusting Babylonian Talmud that um, the world was operating under. It's the code book of world domination and uh, brought to us by the Jewish banking. Originally came out of Babylon and um, just uh, originally
originated, no doubt, from the, um, the Aryan Brahmin Hindu cult. And Brahmin is an abbreviation for the word sovereign. I now know that. That's why Abraham, Brahm, Brahm sounds just like the Brahmins, because it, it has to do with the sun, has to do with the light, energy, and the sovereignty of light. Of course, they're in the darkness. That's their problem. <clears throat> so, this is the beginning of the uh, presentation on the Talmud by Will Durant out of his book, uh, The uh, the Age of Faith. Okay? So, it's uh, the period of 135 to 565 A.D. Within Christendom, Christians are pretty dumb at times. Within Christendom, the remarkable people maintained, most of Christianity is pretty dumb, actually, uh, just like all the other cultures, of course, though. That's why we had to come out. We were told to come out, be a separate people, not a part of the crowd, get out of the crowd. Within Christendom, a remarkable people maintained through every adversity its own unique culture, consoled and inspired by its own creed living by its own laws or shelter and, more, and ethics, not morality, producing its own poets, scientists, scholars, and philosophers, and serving as the living carriers of fertile seeds between two hostile worlds. The rebellion of Bar Kokhba, 132 through 5, was not the last effort of the Jews to regain, well, the Jews weren't back then, actually. They were Judeans. Uh, Jew, the word Jew comes about a thousand years ago, so that word did not exist back then. But everybody seems to want to use it, and you find it in your scriptures. I wonder how that happened. Uh, so they tried to regain Utah, the freedom, uh, the freedom that Pompey and Titus had destroyed. Under uh, Ant uh, Antonius Pius, 138 and 61, they tried again and failed. Their, their holy city was forbidden them except on a bitter, uh, the bitter anniversary of its destruction, 68 to 70 AD, when they were allowed for a consideration to come and mourn uh, by the wall of their shattered temple. I guess that's why they call it the Wailing Wall. The Palestine, in Palestine, uh, where 985 towns have been wiped out, 900, I'll just say 1,000, 1,000 towns have been wiped out by Vespasian and uh, his son Titus, and 580,000 men and women have been slain. 580,000 men and women have been slain. Oh, this is now in the Bar Kokhba's revolt in the period of uh, 138, or excuse me, 132 through 35. So they, there's another slaughter that's almost equal in size as to the one that happened in Jerusalem uh, 70 years earlier. 580,000 men and women have been slain in Bar Kokhba's revolt. The Jew, the Yudean population had sunk to half its former volume and to such an abyss of poverty, poverty that cultural life was almost wholly dead. Nevertheless, within a generation after Bar Kokhba, and Bet Din, or the Judean Nation Council, a court of 71, there's that uh, cosmic number, it should be 72, rabbinical scholars and religists, was established in Tiberius's synagogues, putting out the eye of the sun, synagogue, and the schools were opened, and hope rose once again. The triumph of Christianity brought new difficulties. That would bring the new difficulties for them. Uh, before his conversion, Constantine had placed the religion of the Judeans on a footing of legal equality with those of his other subjects. After his conversion, the Judeans were oppressed with new restrictions and, exact, and exactions, and Christians were forbidden, forbidden to associate with them. Constantius, Constantius banished the rabbis, 337 A.D., and made the marriage of a Judean with a Christian woman a capital crime. Julian's brother, Gallus, taxed the 
you the inn so heavily that many of them sold their children to meet his demands. That's quite a bit of love. In 352, they rebelled again and were, again, suppressed. Sephorus was razed to the ground. Tiberius, uh, Tiberius and other cities were partly destroyed. Thousands of Judeans were killed. Thousands were enslaved. The, con the consultation with other Judean communities was so difficult, or oh, excuse me, the condition of the Palestinian Judeans now, 359 AD, sank so low, and their communications with other Judean communities was so difficult that their patriarch, Hillel II, resigned their right to determine for all Judeans the date of the Judean festivals and issued for the independent computation of these dates a calendar that remains in use among the Judeans of the world, or we can now then call them today, Jews, of the world to this day. Quite a switch out. From these aff aff afflictions, the Judeans were saved for a moment by the ascension of Julian. He reduced their taxes, revoked discriminatory laws, lauded Hebrew charity, and acknowledged Yahweh as a great, a, the great deity. So here it's spelled actually with a V, Y A H V E H. Well, that should be an A, Yahweh. Okay. But um, still, anyway, well, yeah. Owned by Durant. Yeah. And he asked. Judean leaders why they had abandoned themselves animal sacrifices when they replied that their law did not permit this except in the temple at Yeru Eshalom, Jerusalem, now irrelevant. He ordered that the temple should be rebuilt with state funds. Jerusalem was again opened to the Judeans. They flocked to it from every quarter of Palestine, from every province of the empire. Men, women, and children gave their labor to the rebuilding of their savings and jewelry to the furnishing of the new temple. We can imagine the happiness of the people that for three centuries had prayed for this day, 361 and three, now in 361 AD. But the foundations were being dug. As the foundations were being dug, flames burst from the ground, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, and burnt several workmen to death. The work was patiently resumed. But a repetition of the phenomena, probably due to the explosion of natural gas, interrupted the, and discouraged the enterprise. The Christians rejoiced at what seemed a divine prohibition. The Judeans marveled and mourned. And then came Julian's sudden death. State funds were withdrawn. The old restrictive laws were re-enacted and made even more severe. And the Judeans, again, excluded from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the old city, now irrelevant, returned to their villages, their poverty, and their pathetic prayers. Couldn't happen to a nicer people. And so they couldn't rebuild. Isn't this rather interesting that uh, the, uh, the methane gas in the ground or whatever it was, whatever type of gas, uh, prevented them from rebuilding? Literally, fires broke out. Wow. Soon thereafter, Jerome reported that the Judean population of Palestine as but a tenth part of the previous multitude. Wow. In 425, Theodosius II abolished the Palestinian Patriarchate. Greek Christian churches replaced the synagogues, putting out the eye of the sun, and schools, and where the Baalai suits worked. And after a brief outburst in 614, Palestine surrendered its leadership to the Judean world. The Judeans could hardly be blamed if they hoped to fare better in less Christian lands. Some moved east to into Mesopotamia and Persia and reinvigorated the Babylonian uh, jewelry, which had, there's the word jewelry, of course, which had never ceased since the captivity of 597 BC. In, in Persia, as well, the Judeans were excluded from state office, but as all Persians except 
nobility were likewise excluded, there was less offense in the restriction. And there were several persecutions of the Judeans in Persia, but taxation was less severe. The government was normally cooperative, and the ex, uh, ex leric or the head of the Judean community, was recognized and honored by the Persian king. The soil of, of Iraq was then irrigated and fertile. The Udeans, Udeans there became prosperous farmers as well as clever traders. Clever traders. Very clever. No doubt. Crafty. Uh, some, including famous scholars, grew rich by brewing beer. The, the Udean communities in Persia multiplied rapidly. The Persian law permitted, and the Udeans practiced polygamy for reasons that we have seen under uh, Mohammedan law as well. The good rabbis, well, that's right, it's, it's called breeding, I think, ladies and gentlemen, breeding the population. Uh, the good rabbis, Rab and Nahum, Nehman, when traveling, were accustomed to advertise in each city for temporary wives to give local youth and exemplar of matrimonial as uh, against a promiscuous life. In Behariya, Shura, and Pumberithia, schools of higher education rose whose scholarship and rabbinical decisions were honored throughout the dispersion. Meanwhile, the dispersion of the Udeans continued throughout all the Mediterranean lands. Some went to join old Udean communities in Syria and Asia Minor. Some went to Constantinople, despite the hostility of Greek emperors and patriarchs. Some turned south from Palestine unto Arabia, dwelt in peace and religious freedom with their Arab fellow Semites, occupied whole regions of Kabar, almost equaled the Arab in Yathrib, Medina. Made many converts and prepared the Arab mind, get this, made many converts and prepared the Arab mind for Judaism of the Quran. The Judaism of the Quran. Isn't that an interesting statement? Prepared the Arab mind yeah. for the Judaism of the Quran. Uh, that is one to wrap your mind around. And what's interesting is I learned by reading the, uh, the, the Dictionary of Judaica that the uh, that the, the, the Judeans or Jews back then uh, supported and uh, actually worked with the uh, the Muslims in bringing them over to Spain and, and their attempt to uh, destroy all of Christianity. And, and, and over and over in the Judaic Dictionary I have, they seem to be embracing Islam, which really fits when you realize that they are the agents of the Vatican yeah. and that the Vatican also created Islam. So they're all just, you know, kissy brothers and all uh, the priesthood holding hands together while they make us all seem different than each other and get us all to do uh, their uh, insane bidding. You know, yeah, um, and the, the 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 programming and the mind control is is right there. It's in there. You just yeah yeah you yeah. just well, said we it. have to follow the secret societies yeah. because that's where the game is played. That's why in Freemasonry they got on their on their table the uh, the five books of Moses, the the, uh, the New Testament scriptures of Christianity, and the Quran all on the altar in Freemasonry. See, they're controlling all the fronts. Yeah, and our thinking. Some crossed the Red Sea into Abyssinia and multiplied so rapidly that in 315 they were reputed to have be half the population. Judeans controlled half the shipping of Alexandria, and their prosperity in that excitable city fed the flames of religious animosity. Judean communities developed in all the North African cities and in Sicily and Sardinia. In Italy, they were numerous, and through, through occasion, though occasionally harassed by the Christian population, they were for the most part protected by pagan emperors, Christian emperors, Theodoric, and the popes. In uh, Spain, there had been Judean settlements before Caesar, and they had uh, developed there without molestation under the pagan empire. They prospered under the Aryan of Visigoths, but suffered disheartening persecutions after King Recher, Re, uh, Recheret, 586 through 601, adopted the Nicene Council. We hear of no per persecution of the Udeans in Gaul until the severe enactments of the Third and Fourth Councils of Orleans, 538 
538 to 541 A.D., a generation after the conquest of Asia and Visigoth Gaul by the Orthodox Christian Clovis. About 560, the Christians of Orleans burned down a synagogue. The, temp- the, Judean, the Judeans petitioned Gunthram, king of the Franks, to rebuild it at public cost as Theodoric, in the like case, had done. Guntheram refused. O oh, King Glorious, for wonderful wisdom, exclaimed Bishop Gregory of Tours. From such, last paragraph here, from such tribulations, the Judeans of the dispersion always recovered. Well, they're an organized clique. What do you want? <laughs> Patiently, and they still serve the beast, of course. Yes. Yeah. Patiently, they... They were just the ultimate scapegoats at the same time. Patiently, and since the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing, even though they're both controlled by the same faction of the unseen hand, they rebuilt their synagogues and their lives, toiled, traded, cried, lent money, prayed, and hoped, increased and multiplied, and defrauded all the way along the trail, everybody. Each settlement was required to maintain at communal expense at least one elementary and one secondary school, both of them usually in the synagogue, where they put out the eye of the sun. Scholars were advised not to live in any town that lacked such schools. The diction or language of the worship and instruction was Hebrew. The language of the daily speech was Aramaic. Get that. Still common as the, as the main common form of communication, not Hebrew, which was exclusive to the wealthy and the priesthood, but the common diction was the language of the daily speech. Aramaic in the East, Greek in Egypt, and Eastern Europe. Elsewhere, the Judeans adopted the language of the surrounding population. They molded right in. And the central, they pretended to be Christians while they, they followed Judaic, of course. The central theme of Jewish education was religion. Secular culture was now almost ignored. Dispersed Jewry could maintain itself in body and soul, only through the laws. And religion was the study and observation, observance of the law. The question is, what law? The faith it certainly wasn't the ten legislated rules of Moses coming off the mountain. That's for sure. The, it's the oral tradition of the Talmud. We got that last night, of course. The faith of their families, of their fathers, became more precious to the Judeans the more it was attacked. And the Talmud... And the synagogues were the indispensable support, the indispensable support, the indispensable support and refuge, not the, not the books of Moses, get that, uh, the, uh, the Talmud, of an, of an oppressed and bewildered, oh, come on, they're bewildered? <laughs> they know what's going on. People whose life rested on, on hope of world domination, I'll add that, of course, hope, comma, but it's hope of world domination, their ultimate agenda and their hope on faith in their God. It's their God. It's Issa, Isha, Isis. They are made to reign. It's, um, it's quite a legacy, ladies and gentlemen, on planet Earth, and we have to survive it, and the only way we can survive is by being in the know. We can't survive by being stupid and dumb and manipulated and controlled by others. And so uh, you got it here, the Forbidden History series, ladies and gentlemen. It's what they didn't want you to know, of course. And uh, we tell it because, well, we've got nothing better to do, actually, when we discover our world is going down in flames and uh, they destroyed the ozone layer, the envelope that protects us, and and, uh, and are committing psychopathic harry-carry uh, by spraying the skies. Shame on all those pilots, ex-military flying uh, poison jets in our air, uh, manipulating our, our weather, uh, killing all life. And uh, so we're going down, and uh, there's nothing we can do to stop it. Dane Wigington, uh, who did a wonderful report yesterday on YouTube, Dane Wigington, W-I-G-I-N-G-T-O-N, D-A-N-E, Dane Wigington, check it out, ladies and gentlemen, and and know that our, our days are numbered and that we, we have to uh, know who we are, where we are, why we are, and when we are, and, um, and certainly be tell truth tellers, let people know about their environment, their world dying. Um, it's uh, important that most people won't be able to wrap their mind around it, of course, because they're drinking Kool-Aid and, um, and watching um, uh, N- 
NWO wrestling, of course, and therefore they um, will never get it. And they will, they will kill you, actually, to support the beast. And, um, and uh, you know, and geez, you want to you take over, Ninja? I mean, I'm just, uh, <laughs> uh, out of Asia Wars now. And, um, yeah, I'm just, yeah. Wow. Um, and there's a link to Dane's channel in the description of every one of these live streams. I saw his last uh, program as well, and he's he's right on it. He's spot on. He covers everything. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's yeah. uh, 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 been at the right place at the right time that makes him qualified for what he does. Nobody said it better. And, um, and people need to, that's the one thing they can do. I think if they share Dane's work, then um, they, he does the job for them. All they have to do is listen. Yeah. So, um, okay, I want to thank you for your uh, great efforts and um, uh, wonderful graphics today you've done, a wonderful halftime break. I think that was a great idea to have a little something to watch and listen to at the same time like that was uh, great. I uh, hope you can come up with other ideas as well. It will, oh, I will. Uh, help uh, <laughs> the listener to feel, feel more um, settled in and, and look forward to the other portions that we do. We cover a lot of ground and because there's a lot of ground to cover. And I and wait wait till I start unpacking my books again, okay? Because then we're gonna have a lot more wow. to go over. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's been absolutely amazing, and um, yeah, I've felt a difference um, putting up these graphics as well. Even though I've only got a couple in there, there's heaps more that I've downloaded that I'm gonna play around with. Um, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it makes a difference. Um, like it says on the screen right there, see and read it for yourself. Um, get the picture. If if the pictures are up there, um, it adds it adds to it, and it helps helps it all sink in. And the way you explain things is amazing. So thank you, Desert, as always. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's taken a lifetime to be able to get here, and and uh, so I uh, hope everybody. Uh, can uh, see and read it for themselves. Um, uh, we're planting seeds, uh, and then you're, you're, uh, uh, once you know certain aspects of the original thought and the tricks that have been played on us, then um, then you can see and read it for yourself, and you're no longer fooled. So, so uh, the good news is we're going to uh, pick it up tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Forbidden History Live. Three words: Forbidden History Live, uh, produced by uh, uh, Yo Shelley, Shelley G. And uh, so go to Forbidden History Live and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, and then uh, join us again tonight. Love to take your call. Love to uh, to answer questions. That's one of the things I want to do is get an interactive uh, a program where I can answer questions for people because they're, they're, everybody's trying to figure out, you know, certain things. And so I don't care what, what, what area, you know, we can talk about. Okay, we can cover the universe. That's what we do here. Yeah. And so, uh, all right. So don't forget... Um, I'm Desert Al telling you, if you want to know the future, then just look for the Forbidden History, because it's all right here. There's Ninja Cat 111 coming your way. Okay? And, uh, and I'll let you go, Ninja, and thank you. Peace and love. Thank right. you. Bye. Peace and love to you, too. See ya. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm all wowed out. Um, okay, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, with some beautiful music and some more um, sprouting of seeds <laughs> and um, much love to you all be safe always creating light for you guys um, and I'll see you <clears throat> excuse me my voice is going I'll see you guys back in the matrix um, over at the over at Forbidden History Live uh, if you're new to this please subscribe and check the bell. Um, okay, love you guys. See yous.